Hi, Artemita. I think that this is the right example that you're asking about. Um, with this one and with the previous one, what they're actually doing here is um, they're using this little um, formula to, well, not really a formula, but just uh, a check, I guess you could call it, to see what's happening um, with the three planes and whether they intersect or not. And so in this case, what they're, what they're actually saying is that the normal vector, the cross product of the first two normal vectors, um, if you take that and then take the dot product of the third, of that with the third vector, that you get zero. And so they're basically um, saying that two of those are perpendicular. Um, and so what, what they mean by that is if we take the, let's take the first vector, which is 1 minus 1 and 4, and the second vector, which is 3, 1 and 1. So I'm going to write 1 minus 1 and 4, and then I'm going to write it again. This is my little shortcut for the cross product. I don't know if you'll find this easier than the way that uh, the other one, uh, the other examples are showing you how to do it. You do that, you cross out the top and the bottom ones, and then you cross multiply going down. So we have minus 1, uh, take away 1 times 4, which is 4, and so we have minus 1 minus 4, which is minus 5 for the first component. And then if we do it here, we have 12 minus 1, so that's going to be 11. And then here we have 1 minus negative 3, so 1 plus 3, which is 4. And so that's the cross product of the normal vectors from the first two equations. So now if I take that and I take the dot product of that, with the third normal vector from the third equation. When I do that, I'm going to get minus 25 plus minus 11 plus 36. And that's minus 36 plus 36, which is 0. And we know that when we take the dot product of any two vectors, that those vectors are perpendicular. And so what that's actually doing is when, when I take um, the cross product of the first vector with another vector, and I did that with the second one, the cross product gives me a vector that's perpendicular to both of those vectors. And so this vector is perpendicular to vector 1 and vector 2. Now, if I take the, the dot product of that vector with the third normal vector, I get 0, which tells me that those two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So that tells me that one of these vectors is parallel to one of the other vectors and that they, they're not all going to cross. So um, in this case, we have no intersection of all three because we have only pairs of planes intersecting, and that's what they've got shown in the diagram here. So um, this plane here is intersecting with both of the other planes, but at the top you can see that um, there's only one uh, line of intersection between this plane and this plane. In other words, there's not one particular line where all three of those planes meet. And so that's why this one is not consistent. In other words, there's no solution. So just going back for a minute, um, I just wanted to go back and address this one here. Because I know I wrote to you about this and I explained about the two these two vectors being parallel because one was a multiple of the other. And I just wanted to go back and look at this notation again um, because that's, again, what they're pointing out in, in that notation is that k times the first vector um, is, gives you the same vector as the other equation. 
So if we can get a scalar multiple of one vector, and in this case it's uh, 2 or negative 2, yeah, it's 2. I might have said negative 2 in my email because I didn't have it in front of me. So if I take the first vector and I multiply everything by 2, and then I look at the other vector, the second vector underneath it, I'll just write it again so that you can compare. Now you can see that the normal vector for both of these planes is identical, which means that they're um, parallel. And so that's why there's no point of intersection here. Okay, and I think that same holds true for the third one. Um, just having the first two shown as parallel says that there's no consistent solution for all three of these planes, so you can stop there. Um, the third one, if you had chosen to use it instead, would have been three times um, the first vector. If we took this vector here, um, this vector here, whoops, sorry, um, and multiplied everything by three, we would get the bottom vector, or at least the ABC of the bottom vector, and that's all we need. It doesn't matter about the constant term. Uh, so that's what they're trying to explain when you're looking at uh, these examples. Uh, they've got, sorry, going all over the place here. They've got the, um, the explanations here um, drawn out so that you can understand, um, you know, sort of what the criteria are to get the, um, the uh, result that they're getting. Okay?